Hi everyone, and welcome again to Nettle, the go-to place to learn about business, finance, economics, and much, much more. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel by clicking the bell notification button below so that you never miss fresh videos and tutorials you might be interested in. Many thanks to our current Patreon supporters and YouTube members for making this video possible, and we'd also greatly appreciate if you consider supporting us as well. So please check the link in the description or click the join button below for more details. My name is Sava, and today we're investigating an application of bootstrapping to evaluate the statistical significance of a Sharpe ratio. Sharpe ratio are a go-to technique of evaluating the performance of a portfolio, fund, or an asset, and it's quite often that we need to figure out whether our outperformance over some benchmark, for example, is statistically significant. Or sometimes we have got a Sharpe ratio target and we want to know whether we have deviated from it substantially in the uh, positive or negative direction. So here, in our example, we'll evaluate the performance of the S&P 500 tracker fund over the course of almost 30 years. We will use the current one-year uh, annual risk-free rate of 2.11% and assume that our annual Sharpe ratio target is 0.4. Bootstrapping is a technique that's designed to address the limitations uh, that occur when we uh, encounter not independent or not identically distributed returns. When we encounter autocorrelation in returns or conditional head risk elasticity in the return generating process, uh, simpler statistical techniques uh, do not provide reliable results. We have investigated what can be done using the law 2002 procedure if the returns are indeed well-behaved, that is IID, and that's the topic of the previous video. However, here we're using arguably a more robust and uh, not so assumption sensitive of a procedure, which is bootstrapping. Bootstrapping involves repeating a measurement on a number of randomly generated samples and constructing uh, standard deviation, confidence intervals, statistical significance from uh, these random repeated samples or this iterated sampling procedure. And uh, well, it's one of those uh, tools in quantitative finance and in statistics in general, where you just throw random numbers at a problem before it sticks. And uh, it's perfectly valid. That's the essence of Monte Carlo simulation and indeed bootstrapping techniques. However, here we have got a very important decision to make. Do we want to make our bootstrapping random? That is every single iteration will select 12 random months out of our 30 year sample and perform the Sharpe ratio calculation that way? Or do we need to perform a dependent bootstrap where we would select, for example, overlapping uh, 12 month periods or uh, overlapping periods of any length and seeing whether Sharpe ratio outperformance does persist on such samples. And uh, here the notion, uh, the optimal choice uh, of the methodology that we need to keep in mind is what um, is the logic of applying the bootstrap in the first place? As we are dealing with investing and our main uh, concerns are with head risk elasticity and autocorrelation, using dependent overlapping period bootstraps would be a more welcome uh, approach, simply because we're naturally testing uh, when and how often do we outperform the market in consecutive one-year periods, for example, and we also capture the uh, autocorrelation and the conditional head risk elasticity by using those um, coherent and uh, uh, continuous intervals for our bootstrap. So what we'll do first is we'll calculate simple returns over the course of the full sample for all 351 sample months. Then we'll count and verify that we have got indeed 351 months in our sample. And then we'll proceed by calculating uh, rolling window returns, volatilities, and annualized Sharpe ratios for those dependent bootstraps. However, first, let's calculate just the annualized return for the full 30-year sample using the product one plus function, inputting the area of returns, raising it to the power of 12, as there are 12 months in a year and we've got monthly data, divided by the number of observations here, and subtracting one. That would give us an annualized return of 9.72%. Annualized risk can be calculated as a standard deviation for the sample over the course of the whole uh, sample of returns, 
and then as there are 12 months in a year and volatility scales as a square root, we multiply by the square root of 12. And then the Sharpe ratio can be calculated as return minus the risk free rate, given as excess return, over annualized risk, given as a Sharpe ratio of 0 0.5108 uh, annually. Does that significantly outperform the annual Sharpe ratio target of 0 0.4? To do that, let's proceed with our bootstraps. Let's do a 12 month bootstraps because that's our investment horizon. To some extent, that's why we picked annual risk free rate for one year. And that's why we calculated annualized Sharpe ratios. So let's start whenever we have got 12 observations. So over here, uh, bear in mind that in some applications of bootstrapping, you do cycle the sample around. So for the 11th observation, for example, we would treat the very final return as our first return. However, for financial applications, that is not as common, however, still uh, present. So you might also uh, implement a cycled uh, dependent bootstrap. However, here we will just trim our sample size and start with the 12th month that we've got the return for. And here we can simply do product one plus those returns. We'll know that it's annual, so we don't need to raise it into any powers and subtract one. Then we can calculate the annualized volatility by again taking the sample standard deviation of these returns and uh, scaling them by a square root of 12. And then the rolling Sharpe ratio can be calculated as the excess return. So roll of return minus annual risk free rate locked divided by annualized volatility. Then we can enforce it throughout all of our bootstraps throughout 340 overlapping uh, one year holding periods. And then we can count however many bootstraps we've got counting those bootstrap Sharpe ratios. And then we can proceed using two different approaches. First of all, uh, we can calculate the volatility of our rolling one year Sharpe ratios from the bootstraps and use that to perform statistical significance testing. Or we could use the uh, empirical distribution of our Sharpe ratios to figure out the uh, empirical p-value without uh, applying any distributional assumptions whatsoever. I'll show you both methods. First of all, the standard error of our Sharpe ratio can be calculated as the sample standard deviation of bootstrap Sharpe ratios divided by the square root of the number of bootstraps. This is, again, quite intuitive and quite similar to many other statistical techniques you use to perform uh, standard error uh, calculations, giving us a standard error of 0 0.0776, which means that if we want to do a parametric test for our annualized Sharpe ratios, we would first calculate the t-stat, which would be our observed annual Sharpe ratio minus our annual target and divided by our calculated bootstrap standard error, giving us 1.43 as our t-statistic. And then we can uh, use a two-tailed t-distribution, t is two-tailed, uh, inputting the absolute value of the t-stat and the number of the degrees of freedom, which is the number of bootstraps minus two, to give us a p-value of 15%, meaning that this deviation, though sizable, is not uh, large enough in terms of standard errors to warrant uh, statistical significance, meaning that we perform roughly on par with our target, uh, outperforming it, but not by substantial amounts. In terms of a non-parametric distributional test, what we'll need to figure out is how often is one uh, year overlapping Sharpe ratio below our target of 0 0.4. And that would construct a bootstrap p-value which would not rely on our distributional assumptions whatsoever. And to do that, we can count if how many of our bootstrap Sharpe ratios are below the target of 0 0.4. And we can input that and divide it by the number of bootstraps we've got, returning uh, a percentage of 32%. This is due to the fact that perhaps the tails of our distribution for the Sharpe ratio are quite a bit fatter than assumed by a parametric test, which assumes a t-distribution. And uh, due to this fact, very often our Sharpe ratio does indeed fall below the target on those simulated overlapping bootstrap years. And that has to do with the fact that our returns might be uh, autocorrelated, uh, demonstrate explosive behavior, or just high courtesies. And that is the implementation of bootstrap, that is dependent bootstrap, to evaluating the statistical significance of Sharpe ratio outperformance. 
we can obviously change our target to see how well our uh, model will capture that. So for example, if our target is 0 0.3, the parametric test would uh, say that our performance is statistically significant. However, the non-parametric approach would still be skeptical. Even if we input zero, our non-parametric approach would tell us that we are quite uh, often uh, underperforming below our target, whereas the t-statistic for the parametric test is um, overwhelmingly high. Obviously, there's just one implementation of bootstrap, namely dependent uh, overlapping period bootstrapping. And if you want to see some other implementation of bootstrapping or some other statistical technique for performance evaluation or anything whatsoever, please leave a like on this video and tell me about it in the comments. And so far, stay tuned.